So Amaji, I was working out at the gym this morning and I was watching a show on antidepressants and how they're becoming so much more prevalent in the world and people that are just taking these, you know, drugs for emotional issues and they're becoming more and more common it seems. Yes, I, I, I think uh, it helps some people initially to get over a crisis to try and settle them down. Um, but you know, as a long-term solution, I think everybody would agree that staying on antidepressants um, is not a good game plan at all. And you know, we need to figure out how and why we're like that. But why are people depressed? You know, why do they get depressed so easily? Well, if you look at modern times, which we're living in right now, there's so much demand on us to be a certain way, you know. Every time we uh, watch a show on television or read a magazine or Instagram or whatever, it's how you should be looking, how you should be behaving. Um, and so everybody's self-image is getting very distorted. Uh, we're getting more and more in the periphery, how I look, etc. When we need to start looking after mental health and for some, you know, mental health is a word like, oh, I don't want to talk about mental health. It implies something's wrong with me. But actually, according to the sages of India, there's something wrong with all of us. Yeah. Um, from the point of view that we, very few of us know who we actually are. Like, they say, you know, this is my name, but the sages would say, that's just your name. Who are you? Well, I'm, I'm a male, I'm a female. That's just your body. Who are you? Well, I'm an American, I'm an Australian, that's your nationality, who are you? Then you say, well, these are my parents. But the, the Vedic philosophy says, you know, we've been in this wheel of birth and death and have had uncountable parents. So the key, really, is to understand what it is that makes us who, are, who we are. The more you understand that, then uh, mental health is it starts to naturally blossom. Uh, with your knowledge and experience, how would you sort of manage these? Because I know depression is sort of linked with anger and desire and those other emotions. Um, one is meditation. You know, just simply taking time out of, uh, of your whatever your schedule might be, breathing nice and deeply, calming the mind down, and getting more in touch with your own self. The second is knowledge, wisdom, spiritual wisdom, understanding uh, what is this world that we live in? Why is my mind like this? What is the very thing that I want? Now, How do you go from down here to then like onto normal thinking where you can start to improve? Well, first of all, it starts with you, as in uh, your thinking process. Um, I'm going to self-improve. I'm going to take a good look what's in my environment, you know, in the local environment. What are the ways that I can actually start the process of self-improvement? Now, in the West, there's a blossoming phenomenon called yoga. Um, people like yoga because it's an alcohol-free zone. It's an opportunity to be with people who care about, you know, good health. Um, and from that spawns the idea of, well, what are you going to have for lunch? And then people start saying, well, you know, I'm done with fast food. You know, I like to have sprouts and raw vegetables and a nice dal, you know, a nice cooked um, bean, etc. And then from that, um, people start to think, well, you know, the way that I think determines how I feel about myself and, and what decisions I make in my life. So I'm talking about one avenue, which is, is yoga, for example. Um, by associating with like-minded people, you naturally start to think according to the environment where you put yourself. So the first step, I think, towards moving towards mental health is to take a good look at your game plan. By game plan, I mean, what am I doing with my day? Um, am I exercising? Am I getting into the company of healthy, positive people?